In this lesson we will introduce and become familiar with some of the units and the rules for using the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is easy to remember the formula for. It's not as easy to rearrange or remember what everything means in it, but most people can remember that PV equals NRT. PV equals NRT. So that is the ideal gas law formula. So if you look through it, you'll begin to notice a few little differences between this and some of the ratio laws. It's not a ratio law, for one. You'll notice that there's no ones and no twos, there's no beginnings and ends, there's no before and after anymore. This is simply saying PV equals NRT. Uh, anytime, uh, the first thing you want to know about whether you should use the ideal gas law or not is ask yourself, is anything changing? And all these other ratio laws you had, oh, pressure starts as this and turns into that, volume doubles, or what happens with the new temperature? If it doesn't say any of those things, if it just says here's the pressure, here's the volume, what's the number of moles, those kinds of questions, you're usually going to deal with the ideal gas law. It's not a ratio law, there's no ones or twos, and it has a constant in it, that R, PV equals NRT. R is the only thing in there that we haven't used before. We've used P for pressure, V for volume, N for moles, and T for temperature. We've never used R before because R is a constant. It's known as the ideal gas constant. That'll come up in a slide later. But that constant is a number with units. And so we got to be careful. Units matter. Unlike all of those other ratio laws where it didn't matter as long as uh, before equaled after. There's no before after here. So we have a c R. R has units in it, so we have to make sure to use the right units. So let's go through the formula and talk about each different part, what it is, and what the units are. We'll actually start with R. R is known as the ideal gas constant. Its value is 0 0.0821 and its unit is liter atmosphere per mole kelvin. Now that's a weird unit. It's probably one of the most complex units you'll ever deal with for a lot of you. And so um, what does this actually mean? Well what it means is if you take a gas, any gas, and you measure its volume, its pressure, its moles, and its temperature in these units, and then you multiply its pressure times its volume and divide that by th the product of its moles in kelvin, no matter what the gas is, no matter how much you use or what it is, it will always equal 0 0.0821. That's what R is. It's a constant. It's always that number for any gas. When you do this complicated arithmetic to any gas, you'll get that number out. Now, if you use different numbers, different units to measure things with, obviously you get a different number. So. Uh, you need to know a different R as well. You need to know uh, R's for some other things. We'll, we'll limit it just to two R's I would like for you to know. I'd like for you to know this ideal gas constant as well. It's the same value, it's just in a different unit. If we look, you'll see that the kilopascals uh, is in there instead of atmospheres this time. The liter, mole, and kelvin, that's all there. So you need to not only memorize these numbers, but what units go with them. So. The ideal gas constant is 8.31 liter kilopascal per uh, uh, liter pili blah, 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 8.31 liter kilopascal per mole kelvin, or 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole kelvin. So that's the R. That's the hard part. Everything else is easy. Just to summarize, in case you didn't have time to write those down to compare them, notice that everything's the same: liter on top, mole on bottom, kelvin on bottom. The only difference is atmosphere to kilopascal, and you'll notice that this number is actually 101.325 times smaller than this number as atmospheres would be to kilopascals. So if you do a unit conversion on this to atmospheres, you'll you get that number out. So memorize those numbers and those units. So which one we're going to use depends on what pressure unit we're using. If we use uh, uh, we'll get more to that in a little bit as we get into pressure. So let's go back to the formula. That is the R, the ideal gas constant. It's a number. It means a certain number with a certain unit. It's always the same. Now let's talk about pressure. P stands for pressure. The unit on pressure doesn't matter except you have to make sure 
Uh, you can use either kilopascals or atmospheres, but you have to make sure that it matches your R value. You have to make sure that it's consistent with the ideal gas constant that you're plugging in. For example, if you're plugging in kilopascals for your pressure, you're going to have to use that 8.31 for your R value. But if you plug in atmospheres, you're going to have to use that R value, the 0.0821. If you use TOR, you're going to have to either figure out a new R value for TOR. There is one, but I just haven't given it to you. If you want to derive it, you can, I suppose. Or you can just change to kilopascals or atmospheres. So we're going to tend to work in kilopascals or atmospheres. I tend to like atmospheres because I like to multiply and divide by the number one myself when I can. So next, what next? Well, next let's talk about moles. N stands for moles and moles equals G over W. Either the moles would be given or they'll ask for moles or you might have to use the G over W formula where W is the molar mass. So that's pretty straightforward. The next unit that we will talk about is volume. Volume, uh, in fact if you look at the uh, R values liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin, those units that you see in there are the units that you have to use in this formula because they have to cancel out. So for volume we have to use liters. It must be done in liters. If it gives you milliliters, if it gives you cc's, if it gives you cubic miles, it has to be converted into liters before you can use it. And the only thing left that we haven't talked about yet is temperature. Temperature is pretty simple. I'm guessing you can probably figure out what we have to use. It's the same as everything else we must use Kelvin. So that is a brief introduction to all of the different uh, kinds of uh, parts of the ideal gas formula and we will uh, anytime we use it we have to make sure that we use those units.